Hi, I'm Ben. <laughs> and we are Hi Jinx. Hi Jinx. I wonder if we're ever going to get one of these together on one of these um, recordings across the world. I wonder if any of the Hi Jinx will come out together. I doubt it. Yeah. No. I feel like I would have to, like, say it before you did. We'd have it's to be fun. like, one, two, hi, and then you join in. But yeah, although then, got... you know, you might be behind me as well. It's a delay both ways, I guess. So, yeah. Who knows? I mean, you know, sometimes maybe... it's coming through your end, and it's like when people hear their voice and they're like, oh, God, do I really sound like that? And then That's you, how you, I feel. you hear my voice and you're like, God, does he really sound like that? Um, so. <laughs> We've, we've found, despite yes. our many thousands of miles separation, we've found a number of gins that we both are in current possession of, haven't we? Yeah, we've done a decent job. And this next one is an absolute belter. Tell us all yes. about it, Claire. Oh, it. Ah. It's a great bottle. An excellent bottle. Do you think, I think the bottle was the first thing we were like, oh my God, that bottle is beautiful. And then we were like, oh my God, the gin's also beautiful. We found it at the, um, what was the exhibition at um, <laughs> Earl's Court? Yeah. That's fair. That's it, at Earl's Court. Um, yeah. And you were raving about it. You came up to me, you've got to try this, you've got to try it. And I tried it. I was like, absolutely. So we've both invested in our bottles of Duck and Crutch and we're trying not to whack the screen with it. But and I brought mine all the way to New Zealand to share with my family. It would make um, a great cricket bat. There's not much left, and I'm probably going to finish it off now. So, sauce guys. You're good. I've still I've got plenty. Um, but yeah, should we um have a little play with it? Um, it's quite a real <laughs> It's got such a satisfying call as well. It's like it's, it's really it's really strong, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's like it's a the coronavirus with this bottle. Yeah. This gin's basically made in a shed in Kensington, a couple of miles away from where I live. It's so um, small batch, small scale. And those sometimes are the best gins. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, like, don't even get me started on the Navy strength. But... Yeah. Oh, jeez. I mean, the Navy but strength, we... the Navy strength I've got a bottle about... with over here. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't make it to the next video if we made it with the Navy Strength, but... This is it. Freaking delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh, that smells beautiful. It's like sweet citrus and spices on the nose. Yeah. Oh, it's so smooth on the palate. It's like... But what, it's quite a lean gin, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what it's I mean like by that? Mm. Sexually spiced oil. Yeah, but the oil sort of falls away and you get quite a lot of gas on it. It's quite lean rather than something yeah. that sits in the mouth too long. Very, very delicate. Mm. Really a mix. Mm. Yeah. I want someone to like give me a massage with the oil of this gin. Any offers, I think. I think that's open to the room, guys. Well, you know, I don't know. I don't think many Kiwis are probably watching this, so, you know. Well, you guys yes, are. Yes, we meowing in the background. No, I was going to say, okay, you, guys, that... you guys aren't on lockdown anymore now, so, you know, you can have somebody over and have a massage, you know, that's... Yeah. Somebody uh, did see me on Tinder the other day, you know, caught yeah. out for being... Naughty, naughty. I digress. Let's mm. make a martini. So, yeah. you are... With, I'm using you a very are... standard um, French um, vermouth called Noipra which um, is a white wine-based um, vermouth, um, very widely available in the UK and sort of everywhere, to be honest. So this is what we call, um, in science, we call it our control sample. Um, so I'm just going to pour in a little, rinse it around the glass, because that's how I do mine. Um, rinse it around, drop it out, um, and then pour in my um, duck and crutch. Whereas what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with my preferred method, which is because I'm slightly more of a lightweight than Ben. I like to do six parts gin, one part vermouth, stirred over ice. And the vermouth that I've chosen for Duck and Crutch, again, I've gone with the Reed and Reed dry vermouth because I feel like Duck and Crutch has so many of those really gorgeous spices. I think it's going to pair really well with the sort of savoury spice herbaceous palette of this 
vermouth. So, you know, I think it's a it's a bold enough gin. It can it can handle those flavors. Mm. So that's what and we're going to do. It needs it needs a bit of gravity as well in a vermouth as well um, to sort of yeah. balance out as well. It would be great. Exactly. It's going to give it a couple of extra meters of depth, I think. Exactly, exactly. And in terms of in terms of a garnish, what are we thinking? We're we thinking orange. I'm thinking a little bit of orange. So I'm going to do my whole. I'm just going to rim my glass again. So I've got a lovely bit of orange peel here, and what I'm going to do is I'm. Oh, that smells so good. But I don't want to overwhelm the flavor, especially in this tiny little mini teeny glass that I'm doing. So mm. I'm just going to wipe the oils around the sides. So, yeah. and even sort of squeeze it so it spritzes a few oils into the glass. I'm going to do that. But I'm going to do a dip. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a little dip and do that. So it just opens it out. Nice. Makes the glass quite I'm quite. Nice. Because I forgot to bring the thing into the room. So, again, we've got this perfect little, we've got a tiny teeny. That is like a filer teeny because it's so. And a thapatini. Well, right. your fapatini looks a bit like a filatini as well, but that's because it's actually the morning there, isn't it? Whereas it's, it's night time. It's literally lunchtime here, and I'm not quite sure how many lunchtime martinis I can get away with. Oh, my God, that is good. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. So what's in your um, read and read um, vermouth? Because there's one ingredient that I'm expecting you to say that I'm not getting from my vermouth. So tell me what's in your vermouth, okay. and I might have a solution. In order that it's written on the bottle, so I don't know if this is in the order of... Um, in no particular how... order. Wormwood, coriander, manuka, kawakawa, horopito, licorice root, angelica root, bay leaf, lime leaf, cassia, juniper, fennel, and grapefruit. Just quickly... Oh, shh, cat. Keep talking, Come... because the thing you said, the thing you, one of the things you said is what I hoped you would say. So you keep talking whilst I go and get the thing that you, that you said. Keep talking. Is it a bay leaf? It is a bay leaf. Uh, ah, I knew it because I reckon, the bay, I reckon the bay leaf is one of the X factors of this vermouth. So kawakawa, rotopito, uh, and manuka, obviously, but you all know what manuka is because you've all got, like, fancy manuka honey for your colds. But um, kawakawa and rotopito are sort of native New Zealand bush botanicals. Um, and they're both sort of a type of bush pepper with lemony vibes as well. So basically yeah. they're bringing lemon pepper element to the gin. Um, and it's got the standard sort of your normal gin heroes, your juniper, um, your angelica root, your coriander, and then also that grapefruit. Oh, my gosh, Shh, Samson. So I've just um, spent 10 seconds, 10 seconds rinsing my bay leaf into this drink because i just there was one thing i thought i hoped you'd say um and i just think it would add that slightly vegetal element to it to, to elevate it even more oh absolutely and it brings out the roundness of everything because it's almost like you know you know that thing where you know somebody like shoots ahead in the race you know like you see on the tour de france and somebody shoots ahead in the race everybody responds and it's a bit like that in this you know, you bring in a big, big player like a bay leaf and suddenly a lot of the other, the slightly sweet elements of the white wine, the grape from the martini um, and, you know, kind of various little bits sort of and the orange peel. It's like they start to elevate. Um, so yeah. you, get, you get a bit more of everything rather than one yeah. thing dominating. Um, and that's a really interesting thing for us all to think about when we make all we all make our drinks. It's mixology, such a complex thing. It isn't just a case of like throwing a lot of stuff at stuff because sometimes it doesn't work. But don't be frightened to use two or three garnishes if they pair together well. Follow your instinct because it can just elevate everything. It doesn't have to create a muddled sort of mix, does it? Yeah. Like I'm curious now about the idea of using a more savory garnish in a gin and tonic with this gin. Because yeah. normally I would want for an orange or something like that. But what yeah. I what I love is that like the the sort of almost umami quality of the bay leaf because it almost it yeah. gives it like an implied almost saltiness as well because it's a dinner sort of herb isn't it it's something yeah. that you expect to be in like a stock or something so when you but if pair you that with sugar sugar sticks to salt as well you know when you cook yeah. it you know you think about that yeah. so it's that same element that it actually elevates and activates the um the sugary yeah. notes 
in, in it. Exactly the sourish quality that you get with like right. a sweet and salty popcorn or any sort of food or like a salted caramel, salty chocolate. That's and in terms of, of the tongue, because on your tongue you have different senses for different um, tastes. And so what's so satisfying? Why people like things like, you know, salted caramel, for example, um, oh. and, you know, people like sweet and sour Chinese food is because it, sti it simultaneously stimulates, try saying that after a few drinks, simultaneously stimulates different parts of the palate. So you get a deeper sense of satisfaction because you haven't just been like, rabbit punch one certain flavor one part of the tongue throughout an entire meal you've got a full sense of satisfaction um i think that's something that's sort of important to think about um when you're making a drink as well it doesn't just need to have one sort of um, dominant flavor yeah yeah that that drink i've just made is really something mm. it's really this version I'm as well sorry, but i really wish i could pass this vermouth through the camera for you to try because mm. I think it's a really special product and it's it's made by people who make spirits mm. who their distillery is in wine country so it's well, maybe just it's like some, maybe it's something i'm gonna have to get you to bring back you know if and when you ever make it back to the uk it's something i'm gonna oh. have to get you to bring back yeah Hundred percent. So, so what we learned from this video is be bold when um, making your um, drinks, be daring with your um, garnishes um, and don't be frightened to mix things together that um, are not necessarily seemingly bedfellows because follow your instincts and um, follow your nose. Yeah. Beautiful, Talk beautiful, beautiful drink. Cheers. Cheers.